Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. If you're a small business and you use Office 365 or Google Workspace, you know that the data on your cloud services isn't safe unless it's being backed up. For example, what are you going to do if one of your employees even accidentally deletes thousands of dollars worth of contracts or emails and doesn't even pay attention and a few months go by and you must retrieve the data and it's gone? What are you going to do? Well, exactly for that, if you already own a Synology NES, you have a free tool, Active Backup for Office 365 or Google Workspace, that can backup data from the cloud down to your NES, and you're only limited with the amount of storage you have on your NES. So we are going to onboard our demonstration to Office 365, just because the onboarding takes 30 minutes and a few clicks, onboarding to Google Workspace. Just this process takes a good 10 minutes, so I am going to dedicate a video on that, but the entire working with the application and restoration processes are all exactly the same. So let's see how we can keep our cloud accounts safe and backed up to our NAS. All right, guys, so we are at the computer and I want to get started as fast as possible because I do want this video to be as short and as simple as possible. I am going to demonstrate on Active Backup for Office 365. And as I said, I will dedicate a whole other video on onboarding with uh, Active Backup for Business for Google Workspace. But once you're onboarded, the entire process, the portals, the actions, they almost look exactly the same. In fact, the differences will be almost just in terminology. In Office 365, you will restore files from OneDrive, whereas in Google, in Google Workspace, you will restore file from Google Drive. So let's get started. And the first thing we should do, obviously, will be, will be going to the package center and installing the application that suits your needs. We're going to install the Office 365. So let's go ahead and hit install. And while it's installing, we can already jump to control panel and create a new shared folder. This will be the, the folder where the application will hold all the backed up data. So let's call it Office 365 Backup. Now, I'm not going to even bother with anything else. It just needs to be a regular shared folder nothing special at all right so the shared folder is created meanwhile the application was installed one thing that we need to do on our shared folder is to go into edit and do it and only after the application is installed go to permissions switch to system internal user and find the active backup office 365 and assign read and write permissions let's click on save so that's it on the dsm side of things but once we are onboarded we will of course be able as admins to restore items for all of our users but at the end of the road we will want our users to use the restoration portal on their own to restore their own files and the emails if they're accidentally deleted so we will need to create user accounts on our dsm device and that's the catch here they will need to match exactly in the username and email field what they're uh, configured on office 365 so for example i have a user called cosmo kramer this is exactly this user's username in office 365 and i will put his email address again exactly as configured on office 365 I have already created an Office 365, Office 365 tenant, sorry, and I've already uh, added this domain to Office 365. I don't have a problem showing it because it will cease to exist 
once this video is uh, out on YouTube, let's set a password. And on the applications, again, we will need only to select the application, the uh, restoration portal, and allow the user access. Click on next to everything else. And that's it in regard to in regards to in preliminary steps on our DSM. Now it's time to actually launch the Office 365 application and we will need to activate with our Synology account. You will of course activate with yours. All right, package activated, meaning we can now go ahead and use it to create a backup task. Let's click on next. Choose Office 365, that's great. Certificate password, the, the application will create a certificate that it will use to authenticate against Office 365. Make sure you hold on to this password. Synology Tech Support will not be able to recreate it for you. And now we are taken to authenticate against our Office, our Office 365 tenant. Make sure you have an account that is a global admin on Office 365. Make sure to use 2FA to protect your global admin account, in fact, any other account. All right, so now what we are prompted to, to accept is certain permissions the application will need to have against Office 365 to pull data in it. So, in, in, by the way, in Google Workspace, this is exactly the difference in the, in the onboarding because we will need in Google Workspace to manually go and assign permissions to our application. And in Office 365, we are just accepting a, a pre-ready action for us. So let's give it a minute or two. And now click on agree. Yeah. All right, so the authentication and the creation of all the necessary settings on Office 365 is complete. We are now prompted to download a certificate. We need to make sure to hold on to this certificate because again, Synology can't recreate it for us. And in case we need, for example, to uh, relink this backup test to a different source or destination or something, we will need the certificate. Make sure you hold on to it. Okay, so now let's give our task a name. Backup destination will be the shared folder we have created. Backup list, this will actually mean which users or groups or teams we want to backup. In this case, it's already selected all of them. By the way, you, you don't have to. You can, for example, create groups for I know, employees and only select to backup their mail. And another group for managers that you can select and then select everything and then assign users to the designated groups. And this will dictate what is being backed up for them. We will just accept the defaults in this case. And I do want to enable the active backup restoration portal. So again, so that users will be able to uh, restore items without needing to call you. Let's click on next and click OK. And now this is uh, auto discovery, meaning what is going to happen once the application recognizes a new user has been created on Office 365. By default, it's going to want to backup everything for him. You can accept this default, and if you're going with a group membership kind of methodology, you can just uncheck everything in here and let the group membership to be a, a, the a decisive factor on what's being backed up. Let's click on next, and let's create a schedule. I like scheduled backups, so let's make it daily, 9.30 p.m. That's fine for me. I don't want to keep all versions because that's going to eat away at my storage space. I'm going to keep 10 versions for every employee. Let's click on next and click on done. Do I want to run a backup now? Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's give it 
anything from uh, uh, two, five, ten, fifteen minutes, depending on the amount of data you already have on your Office 365 tenant. I'm going to pause the recording and resume it once it's done. All right, so our backup is completed, and now we are actually ready to protect our users' items on Office 365. So if you're uh, still at this point imagining or thinking, what can this do for me? Let's give a, a, a proper example. Let's say we have a user that have accidentally deleted an email or a, a file from OneDrive. There, uh, for a certain amount of time, will maybe be on the deleted items or in the bin. But after that, it's completely gone and without enterprise grade uh, uh, subscriptions to Office 365 and retention policies and litigation holds, these deleted items can no, can no longer be recovered. This is exactly where the restore portal comes in. I've logged in as a user in my Office 365. So let's switch over to that. And you see that I have some files in this user OneDrive. So let's take this file, for example, and delete it. And let's make sure we already, we also delete this file from the recycle bin. That's great. Remember the name of the file. It was a Word file, Office 365. And let's take an email. The title will be new employee training. You can see there's a little smiley face here and let's go ahead and delete it. And let's also make sure we delete this file also from the recycle bin. So let's empty this folder completely. And now without any effort, almost no effort, we can go back to our DSM and launch the restoration portal. Now, since I'm logged in as an admin user on my DSM, I can go ahead and browse through all of my users. So let's select Cosmo Kramer. And this is exactly the file that we want to restore. So let's select it and select restore to the original folder. I don't want to create a new folder for it, although we can if we want to maybe compare files side by side so we can restore a file and place it in its own folder. But for our for demonstration purposes, we'll, we'll uh, restore to the original folder and also restore share permissions that will come in handy. Let's click on OK. Let it do its thing. And we're done. But let's also go to our mail part of the restoration portal. And here is the user's inbox. And that's the new employee training email we have deleted. So let's select this one as well. Click on restore and one mail to the inbox. And again, restore to the original folder. Click on OK. And we're done. So let's click on hide and let's go back to our user's mailbox. And hold and behold, here is the email with a smiley face and everything. Let's go back to OneDrive, to my files. Let's click on refresh here. And that's the file restored with all of its content, which means the application works perfectly. That's great. But let's go back a step. We created a user in our DSM and the purpose was what we've said initially. We want our users to be able to restore items for them for themselves without needing to call us. So we have created a user. We have given it the exact same username and the email address exactly as configured on Office 365, which should mean that I can open an incognito window and log into the DSM and be presented with the restoration portal because I have assigned permissions to it. And in the restoration portal, I should be I should be getting my or this user's mailbox and OneDrive. So let's go ahead and go back to our incognito window. Let's try to log in to DSM.
By the way, you don't have to go through logging in to DSM. We can provide them a link to the restoration portal. All right. So now that we're in DSM, we do have the portal waiting for us right here. So let's launch it. And as expected, since the username and email are matching, we are automatically taken to our account items. By default, we are logged in to the OneDrive portion, but we can switch to the email portion. And again, we can just like that restore whatever items we want for ourselves without needing any IT support, which is a great thing. Guys, just, just so that we are level here, this kind of ability that is only limiting us by the amount of storage we have on our NAS, we usually get only in the enterprise grade licenses of Office 365. This is a huge thing. Now, even if you have users that are long, that have long left the company and their data is still backed up, you can still restore the data. For example, if you're looking for uh, files uh, from their OneDrive, you can just download them or email files, you can download as .eml files. The data is there as long as it's not deleted from the backups on your NAS. So guys, this was Hectic Backup for Office 365. In, the, in regards to the uh, everyday usage of the application, it's exactly the same for Google Workspace. And I, uh, as I said, we'll dedicate a video to onboarding on Google Workspace. I hope this video was informative. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, give it a like, and I hope to see you all in my next video.